Hi, everybody. Jeff Brady here. We're speaking with Jason Young. He's a corporate consultant, speaker, and the author of The Culture Topia Effect. So, Jason, uh, tell me a little bit about that title. It's a very unusual word, yes. and you kind of sought this term out, yeah. right? Well, the, the, the idea of culture topia is it's really a, a, a fancy way of saying workplace environment, it, the, the kind of environment where everybody can do their best work. Uh, and I was looking for a way of describing that environment um, in terms of culture. Right? And so I, I tried a lot of different words, came up with culture topia, and really my desire was to find one that when you did a search for it, you got no hits on the internet. No one else had thought so of it before. Nobody is, a, is a original, an, an original internet word for you right there. It's pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it sounds like utopia, like it's nirvana, like it's something that is almost unattainable, but in fact, it really is attainable, and there's some great examples of uh, corporate cultures that are something like this. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it is an ideal state, and we're all striving for that ideal state. Uh, in organizations, they're trying to create this environment uh, where everybody can do their best work. Um, you know, these days we have to do more work, better work, and faster work, and we have to do it with less resources. And to do that, you have got to create a workplace environment that frees up potential, uh, pulls out talent, and allows people to really uh, participate and perform at a high level, but also maintain a high level of, of fulfillment within that. And, and talk about, you, you spend a lot of time talking about corporate values yeah. and how the leaders at the top establish that, and then there's a trickle effect. What, what is that like? The idea that values, and, and if you want to define values as a, a mission statement, or it could be a, a, a set of guiding principles, it could be a, a, a vision statement, it really doesn't matter. It, it's whatever the organization is using to set the purpose and the direction of the organization. Uh, so if you want to have a fun culture, you need to define that right up front. Uh, there's cultures that just want to make money, and that's fine too, but we can define that up front. Now you might have less fulfillment in some of those cultures, but it just depends on what you're trying to attain. Culture-topia would be a place where there's high performance and high fulfillment all in that same space. And so what are some of the tenets that people might be able to glean from the book that would help a company reach this kind of high standard of creating culture-topia? This, this idea of values, it really, that's what's going to shape the culture of the organization um, or the, the culture of a family or of, of a community. Right? This is who we are, this is what we say we believe. Because of that, we begin to behave in a certain way and we begin to share certain um, uh, cultural similarities in an organization. Now, culture is tricky because it goes in, you know, there could be a startup culture where everybody's going full steam and no one's saying it's not my job in a startup culture. But at the same time, those guiding principles are saying, hey, we're going to have fun, we're going to meet needs and employees. And then you grow, you build, you recruit, you're managing, you get to this maturity phase. Right? And, and then you ask yourself, are we closer to Culture Topia than, we, than when we started? If not, that's where you stop and you take a pause and that's where you get into the learning culture. Right? And in that, in that state is where you're, you're making little adjustments right? or sometimes big adjustments. Right? If we have something that's really creating a, this big gap in the culture, then we want to try to close the gap. But it has to all be you know, in that mindset of change. Uh, and that's a, a key concept mm -hmm. of Culture Topia. I'm willing to be flexible and adaptable and make changes to achieve this high level of, uh, of performance and high levels of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And it's really creating a culture where the employees are elevated or respected or even rewarded by really creating an environment where they want to come to work, they want to participate right. in the goal of, right. the, of the company. That's right, because as an employee, if I'm getting needs met at work that aren't being met anywhere else, I want to be there. I, I look forward to going into, into that environment. Uh, it's a term that I like to call relational coordination, fancy way of saying teamwork. And if we can create this environment where we're keeping employee tension low, well, let me just define it like this, two types of tension, task tension and people tension. Mm. Right, so if I can keep people tension low, I can get task tension high. So people tension is anything that could get in the way of me doing my job, anything that could get in the way of, uh, so my people tension today, I mean, my task tension today was to show up and, and to have a conversation with you, right? Uh, if I had something happen in my life that got, would get in the way of that, my people tension would go way high because I couldn't achieve the task. Are there certain benchmarks or concepts in the book that people will can gather that will help them chart the course? Yeah, philosophically, we, we outline what is culture topia and what are uh, we talk about some of the cultural crises that we have right now, especially in this economy, and then we get into this. Uh, idea of values and what are those values and then we go through seven culture topia values and it's really a roadmap it's a roadmap that will help any organization 
and or family for that matter, because uh, I think the book applies to everybody. Um, and it doesn't matter what level of the organization, it doesn't really, uh, you know, I, ideally if we're going to achieve, achieve Culture Topia, everybody has to buy in, right, at all levels. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I, I think anybody could get behind, anybody could pick it up and look at it and go, yeah, uh, that makes sense to me and I'd like to achieve that. So it's applicable for really any kind of organization. It could be for-profit, non-profit, yep. large, small, anyone could pick up on the ideas. Culture Topia is going to look very different. Uh, you know, at an airline versus a community center, right? But the concepts get you to that place, right? And so that's why I, I love the concept of Culturetopia. It, it applies to all organizations. Mm -hmm. And is it really, it begins at the top. It has to begin at the top, right? With a vision and values set by the, the leadership. Ideally, that's, I think, the fastest way to achieve mm -hmm. um, Culturetopia. I've been in organizations where there's pockets of Culturetopia. There could be a division leader or it could be a team leader. Um, there could even be a grassroots effort from employees to say, hey, you know, we, we want to create an environment for ourselves. And so they, they start to strive towards this idea of Culturetopia. Uh, I was working with one, one group, and a group of employees just got together with some chart paper, and they said, how do we want to work together? What kind of environment do we want to work in every day? And they made a really nice list. And uh, you know, then that took, that took off. Other departments started doing the same thing, and it, it kind of came up from the ground. Ideally, though, your, your top leadership is going to buy into this and they're going to uh, put things in place to make it easy for people to achieve Culturetopia. You mean you're making change easy? No way! Well, we're making it quicker. Quicker! <laughs> right? Okay. And, and so it's, it's easier because we're getting through it faster. Right, right. Uh, one of the things I talked about in the book is I don't think the companies that will be the most successful are going to be doing what other people do better. I think they'll be doing what other people aren't willing to do. In Culturetopia, there's some things in there that when people do things that other companies aren't willing to do, all of a sudden, this culture emerges of high performance and high fulfillment. Is that because they're extraordinarily hard to do or because most companies just don't think that way? I think it's a little bit of both. I think there are certain concepts. If, if I've been in a very unhealthy culture, a combative culture for a long period of time, coming out of that is very difficult. Um, and, and tough decisions have to be made because there are going to be some people who choose not to uh, not to move mm -hmm. and, and, and those are hard situations uh, but there's other things where I've just never thought of that before being able to go through a process of thinking it, it, just shifting your thinking just one degree now you're in a new space mm -hmm. and you can see things differently so culture topia is attainable it is attainable if you read the book <laughs> if you read the book <laughs> <laughs> is that right <laughs> Basically, basically, it's, it, you're, you're going to have a better chance of getting close to Culturetopia if you go through some deliberate process to get there. Okay, thanks. Thank Jason you. Young, we were talking to Jason Young today about the Culturetopia effect, and it's available today.